we will have a fuller understanding of this scripture tonight as we study around it. He said, every word of God is pure. He is a sheep. Can you please take note of it? The Bible says, word of God. And then he used the pronoun he. It means every word of Jesus. Because Jesus is the word of God. He said, every word of God is pure. He is a sheep to those who put their trust in him. So it is the word of God. He said, do not hard to his words. Least he rebuke you and you are found to be a liar. He said, two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. One, remove falsehood and lies far from me. Secondly, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Least I be full and dis- deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or least I be poor and still and profane the name of God. I want to read from all that translation because sometimes, you know, when we just read, I- I've had different interpretations of this scripture. But if you read from other translations, uh, you'll be able to uh, put everything in proper perspective. So I read first from TPT. It says, every promise from the faithful God is pure and proves to be true. That is a wrap-around shield of protection for all his lovers who run to hide in him. Never hard to his words, or he will have to rebuke you and prove you and prove that you are a liar. God, there are two things I'm asking you for before I die. Only two. Number one, empty out of my heart everything that is false, every lie, and every crooked thing. And give me neither undue poverty. Can you see it's making a, a bit of meaning? No undue wealth. But rather feed my soul with the measure of prosperity. That places you. I read from um, the CEB, which is the Common English Bible. All God's words are tried and true. A sheep for those who take refuge in him. Don't hide to his words, or he will correct you and show you to be a liar. Two things I ask of you. Don't keep them from me before I die. Fraud and lies. Keep far from me. Don't give me either poverty or wealth. Give me the, just the food I need. Or I will be fool and deny you and say who is the Lord. Or I will be poor and still and dishonor my God's name. You know, when you read that scripture, it should steer your heart about the meaning. One of the problems that the body of Christ, we have up to now, is a problem of balance. We usually swing to one extreme at each time. And there was a time that uh, the, the saying about the subject of prosperity came. And so, I mean, we had messages around the subject of prosperity, and then we just swung to the other extreme that led to covetousness, and that even led to what Solomon was making note of here, as fraud and lies, people steal in the larger society. People are still stealing. But I want us to look at the balance. I mean, if you look at other subjects, water baptism, the the doctrine of healing, the doctrine of salvation and redemption itself, there are many schools of thought. But I'm so glad, because this was towards the end of Solomon's life. He has seen it all. He has walked in his experience. And he said something at this opening verse. He said, every word of God is pure. And I think if we we maintain balance, we must take that position. That every word of God, whatever God's word says about any subject matter, that is the final word, not Sassenbrunn. But that 
That is the final word. For example, the subject of healing. Whether you take your healing or not, he has been wounded for your transgression. He has been bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement that was supposed to bring you peace has been laid upon him. And by his stripes, you have been made whole. Nothing can change that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, he said, For you know, so we must know it. There is a grace that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor, so that through his poverty, we might become rich. So, the, that's the balance. And he said, that's not the end. He said, God is able to make that grace. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, a band towards you and I. That grace, when it comes, not to diminish, he said that we may have sufficiency in all things and we may have an abundance unto good works. So, there is a saying that when they want to describe people with high level productivity, uh, people with a good business acumen, people with high level performance in their life endeavors, there is a saying that is common use. They said, this person has a Midas touch. In other words, whatever this person touches, he just prospers with it. If this person sells water, he prospers. If he sells high on rods, he prospers. If he deals in stock market, he prospers. And there is just that saying that cut across our society. So when you want to describe Describe a high-level performer. What one of the words we use is that he has a minder's touch. When you want to describe someone who can revive a company, someone with good skill, someone who has good fortune, we use this word. Someone who can uh, turn uh, lemon into lemonade, we use this word. But I want to give us the history of that word so that we can balance it with the subject of prosperity. According to the Greek mythology, in other words, their stories, Midas was a king who lived in the 8th century BC. Midas was a very wealthy king. Midas, at that time, this Midas, has deposit of gold than anyone who ever lived at that time. In fact, he had vault underneath his house. So, and, but there is just one peculiar thing about him. The more he gets this gold bar, the more he desires more. So he had a large chunk of deposits of gold. Yet, he was never satisfied. No matter the numbers, on, I mean, he had treasurers. He had people who were looking who were, I mean, he had good stock. He had everything. So he was a king, very wealthy. He had servants. He had everything as a disposal. But the problem that he had, it was never enough. And I want us to hold on to that because that's the balance for us in the subject of prosperity. Let me just jump ahead of myself. When you want to walk, you want to be wealthy, you have to decide up front what is contentment to you? Can I have an amen tonight? Can I have an amen? Uh, it's not just what is contentment. What is God's definition of contentment? So, this king was just never satisfied. So, he made, he, one day, he was sleeping, and he said he had an appearance of a being who appeared in a white, and asked him to make a wish and guess what he made as a witch? He said, let it be that everything I touch becomes gold. So that being told him that, consider it done. So when he woke up from that sleep, the best sheet that's, and the best spread and all that, as soon as he touched it, everything just became gold. He woke up, touched the bedpost, it became gold. He ran in the, 
the, the, the spallers shouting, more gold, more gold. So as it was touching the walls, everything was turning to gold. So he was so excited. So they said that it was time for him to eat breakfast. <laughs> you already know where we are going. <laughs> so as soon as he sat on his seat, the seat turned into gold. They brought the bowls for his breakfast. As soon as he picked the spoon, it became a gold. The plate became a gold. So problem number one, he wanted to drink water. The water became a gold. The water inside the cup became a gold, solid gold. So while he was trying to unravel that mystery, his daughter came in and said, good morning, and just rushed towards him. As soon as he hugged his daughter, the daughter became a piece of gold. So after all these experiences, within the space of a few minutes, he became very miserable because one, he could not eat. Two, the things that was so much precious to him because he loved his daughter turned into gold. So the things that can't even be quantified. It, could, it doesn't have control. So he cried out, and that being appeared to him again. So it was recorded that the being asked, Ah, oh, but I granted you the wish. He said, No, that, that's not what I want. He said, So the being asked him, Express just one wish. One more wish. He said, That my daughter may be restored back to me and touched that statue and before he touched the statue he made this statement he said if you can just grant me this wish because all the other things that I've asked for has become a curse for me because I have missed out on all the things that I truly love they have not, now lost them. He said, I will give you all my gold if only my daughter is restored back to me. And so that being instructed him, go and bath in a spring of water. And when you are coming back, bring water. Anything you sprinkle that water on will be restored back to their own original position. And that was what he did. His daughter was restored back to him. And then he gave up the idea of golden touch. You see, in this life, we must have the balance to understand that the things that really matter is where we need to put our priority on. And what are those things? Number one, family. Family. Number two, health. And I'm saying this so that you can also understand. I'm, I'm sure that if you cast your mind quickly, there are people who are wealthy in our society, but they lost their family. Isn't it? There are people who are wealthy, but they lost relationships. Because the way they went about it, they killed. They made just to be able to go. So the simple things of life, family, health, beauty, ability to collect sunshine, they are the things that really, really matter. And that's what really matters to the heart of God. Can I have an amen tonight? Amen. So the minder's touch is that ability for each one of us to be able to define what really matters in this life. So in our quest to prosper, in our quest to create wealth, we will put premium on what matters to the heart of God. Can I have an amen? You know, Jesus up front says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing that people run after, the Gentiles run after, 
shall be added to you. You know, brother, sister, this is the balance. The truth is that we don't live in a fairy tale world. The truth, as our story is saying, is that there is no Midas touch or magical formula for material success outside God. I listened to someone on, on, on you know, the way they do this small clip today. A respectable uh, person in, 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 the, in the body of Christ in Nigeria. And he was saying something, and he was emphatically saying it. I said, this is wrong. He said that you don't need God to prosper. My brothers, my sister, you need God to prosper. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, remember the Lord God who has given you power to get. In John chapter 3, I, I guess, he said, no one can receive anything. Even though he was trying to use the example of Warren Buffett and all that. But the truth is that you don't know their personal life, except you know it. There is nothing, any tangible thing that anyone will do in this world, in this part of the eternity, that there is no divine breath or inspiration. That's one of the excesses. We must balance it. For the believer, you cannot prosper outside of God. And the blessing of God, Proverbs 13:20, that makes rich and have no sorrow from it is from God. Can I have an amen tonight? That's why we need to study the Bible for ourselves. Because I'm very sure that many people will have seen that video and they will have hidden it up like Indomie. And for the Father, somebody said this that we respect. If the word of God does not say it, or if the word of God says something contrary to it, even what I'm teaching you tonight, if you can open the Bible and you find the truth for yourself, discard what I'm, I've said to you and hold on to the Bible. Can I have an amen tonight? Amen. That's how to grow spiritually. I mean, many people, that's one of the extremes. Many people will say, oh, my pastor said, my bishop said, my overseer said, if what your pastor, your overseer is saying is not in the word of God, it does not align in the word of God, it will be safe for you and I to hold on to what the word of God says rather than hold on to the opinion. And I hear that a lot these days. He said, me, I think. No, I don't have anything to think except what the word of God says I should think. You hear things like, my own opinion, no, no. I need God's opinion over every subject matter of life because your own opinion will fade with usage. God's word endures forever. Can I have an amen tonight? Amen. You know, I, I've told you that some of these things, they taught all of us. But it's, it's time for us because God is preparing us for things to come. We are in the thick of a revival. The economy of nation is changing. Even our own nation here, things are changing. And you need to be strategically positioned for what God is doing, not what people are doing. God is not a Democrat. God is not a conservative. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He has his own order. He, lives, he, he leads his people by instructions. By his word, he leads them. And he leads them into greener pastures. Can I have an amen? amen? It may look stupid to many people, but that's the way. Because God doesn't want self to be involved in what he's doing. He doesn't share his glory with any man. For the fact that anything is popular in our world, if it's not in the word of God, please don't follow the trend. Trend comes. Just like there is no new fashion. Everything we are wearing today, at one time in history, people have worn them. Every star, there is nothing new. Solomon, this same Solomon said it. There is nothing new. What we have is that people just look at those same things and then bring new things out of what has existed. Can I have an amen tonight? Amen. So what is the mind of God? There are biblical principles concerning prosperity and blessing. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. We just go through these scriptures together. Isaiah chapter 1, this is how God operates. Can we read together? One, two, three, go. If you are willing. So that means if I am willing, 
and you are willing, and then we are obedient. Look at the spelling of this obedience. You know that it's different from your regular spelling. So, uh, so that somebody will not come and throw out revelation. He said, even obedience is in the Bible. <laughs> Can we go one more time tonight? If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Look at what happened in verse 20. If we are not willing, what will happen? And rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, there are swords in the marketplace. There are swords in businesses. So, when we don't follow the voice of the Lord our own God, we will be destroyed. It's not God, but you know how principles work. Look at me now. I jump up. Where do I do? I come down. If I stay substandard, you say, Pastor has started practicing Eastern religion. Because I'm obeying a law, there is a force that has already established it. It's called the force of gravity. Everything that gravity, everything you throw up must come down. If I want to be spiritual tonight, I go on top of Sheraton and I jump up. Where am I coming to? Down. He, Joe Biden, jump up from that same spot. Where is he coming to? If President uh, Tinubu jump up, if the Pope jumps up, <laughs> can I have an amen? So that's how principle works. He's not a respectable person. He's not a respectable places. So God says, for those of us in the kingdom, if we are willing and obedient, we will hit. It means in God's kingdom, he has a land. And he has planted each of us in those lands. So, when we follow through his instruction, it's a biblical principle. We will enjoy the good of the land. Another one, Job 36, verses 11 and 12. I want to point something out to you again. Job 36, verses 11 and 12. Can we read together? Can you see the same word? And serve me. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. The next verse, if they do not obey, can you see again? And they shall die what? In Proverbs 19, he said, my own people. He said, they perish for what? Lack of knowledge. He didn't say the devil. It's my own people. So, there is something that is synonymous for the believers. It may look like you and I, we are, how do they say, we are fanatics. It's better to be fanatic with the word of God and get the result rather than be struggling, I mean, be, be following the social trend and then be struggling as many other people are struggling. Can I have an amen? amen. We have an advantage. That's why he says, this word of God is pure. It's pure. The next one, Isaiah 48, 17. I just want to, I mean, stir up your mind to know God honors his word. There are biblical scriptures for prosperity. There's a book in my hand. I think I'm going to list them out. You, all you just have to do, you and I have to do, is to recognize our land. That's the first thing to do. And then meditate in those scriptures and begin to engage those scriptures as we journey through in our land that he has planted us. Can I have an amen? amen. Can we read this together? So says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you. Can you see the difference? Jesus established it. He said there are two things. It's either you serve this God or you serve Mammon. But we have chosen to serve him. And when is our Lord, is our God, who teaches us to profit, who leads us in the way that we should go. Read verse 18. Because it's still the same thing. When people don't choose, they say, oh, that you had heeded my commandment. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Can I have an amen? Amen, amen means it is settled. Signed, sealed, and delivered. No controversy. You can go to the north, go to the south, go to the east, go to the west. 
the word of God remain consistent. And then if you yield yourself to it, the benefit stands sure. Proverbs 22, 9, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. Can we read together? One, two, three, go. He shall stand before kings. So, God recognizes diligence. He recognizes hard work. He recognizes consistency. God does not promote laziness. God doesn't promote procrastination. God recognizes that if you are consistent in the land that he has planted you, you will produce wealth. Can I have an amen? amen. Yeah, I need you to follow me. That's why I say, can I have it? So that you can give it to me. You can donate it. Amen? amen. And you have donated this, you will reap instantaneously. Amen. Proverbs 12, 24. Proverbs, these are principles of God's word. When people say you don't need God, I don't agree. Can you see this one? Can we read? One, two, three, go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the word of God. Can we read this one? It's always very exciting when I read it. Pro, uh, Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not. So you see the things that he doesn't do. He walks not. He stands not. He sits not. Can we read one more time now? Blessed is the man who walks not in the castle of the body. Not in the palace of the Not sit in the seat of the scumble. Look at the difference. But his delight is in the law of the law. And in his law, he meditates day and night. As a result of staying consistency in the world, what does the Bible say will be the result? Shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. So every season of your life is the season of the Lord. And if you are willing and obedient, so is he independent of the four major seasons? I saw something. And I, I now realize that it's actually God's principle. 24 hours economy. If you read Isaiah 60, he said, Your door, your gate shall not be shut day and night. It means our path, as we say, consistent. We build things by the help of the law to the point that whether you are sleeping or you are awake, the region of the world that you are in, money is coming in. The reason why a lot of us will struggle with that, we'll get into it in the final note. That's the mind of God. Whether we now take advantage of it is not. So God honors his word. We will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, not just one river that we are struggling to draw nutrients from. Is that it brings forth fruit in its season. The leaves do not wither. And whatever he does, whatever he does, does what? Whatever he does, does what? So we need this balanced view. That's why I pull out these scriptures. It's not just even confessing. Me, I know go suffer, I know go back. You know all those songs that we sing. No. It's aligning ourselves. We are not using God. We are following his agenda. He has an agenda for this generation. That men, if you don't know, I'm just telling you the agenda. That men will come into the saving knowledge of the truth. True prosperity. His kingdom shall be spread abroad. That's his agenda. For God so loved the world that is gay. And if that becomes your agenda in business and career path, get ready for wealth. That's where we, we missed it. That's the balance. Because so, we took that power and people actually prosper in the body. But we became too proud to be contained. And then some people just go to the other way. So they, are, they were filled. They have no use for the money. They begin to take second, third, fourth wife.
So we can stay the course with God in our business. We can run with this mind of God as revealed in the Bible. You know, I've said, the church, we've been battling with this extreme in the application of this truth. Let me say one of those things so we, we get the correct perspective. You know, there was a time that people said Jesus didn't live, that, that Jesus, I mean, in the body of Christ, they said Jesus lived in abject poverty. So money is evil. There is no need to be enriched. Heaven is coming. We must not be hardly mindless, uh, uh, heavenly minded, and then we are, we are just, the things of this world, we are just passing through. So that extreme, we swung into it. And there was also the voice in the church. They said, Lord, they went they going to pray for their pastor. They said, keep the pastor humble, and we will keep him poor. So you see every Sunday at that dispensation, brethren, we brought nothing into this world. Surely, many people in the larger society were buying stocks. I went into a space on Monday night. If you see the volume of land, that club started in the 40s. Can I have an amen tonight? Amen. I will strike the balance. So it's no, it's, there's no need. To, so the way is as if Jesus is coming tomorrow. So we swung to that extreme. And then over time, light came. He said, no. Some people even preach around the garment. He said, uh, of Jesus. And that, that garment, for people to be fighting over it, is a very expensive garment. So we swung to that extreme. Uh, that's, Jesus didn't sleep in a boat. He slept in a yash. Because that, the Bible says he had layers. So there was a contest between conservatism and then we want to make it. And we shall make it. Amen. Amen. And everybody was making it. True, true. But we made it. We forgot our families. We made it at the detriment of our health and well-being. So the prosperity message became laden with confusion, error, and extremes. And that is what we are still suffering from. I'm, going to, I'm not sure, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about principle of giving. I will start that on at the Sunday services. So, and I've made up my mind, we have to talk about it again. You know, giving is a measure of discipleship that you're actually following Jesus. He gave it for you all. So, we can't say, I was, I was saying to so somebody, somebody was asking me about tithing. I said, how old are you? And the person told me, he said, I said I've been paying tight before you were born. I started paying tight as a student in the University of Lagos, over 10 era. So, it's not what you are shouting on Facebook now that will make me, whatever that revelation, whether it's hypnosis or whatever it is, apocalypsis, whatever you want to target, that's not what is going to change my mind. I said, for your information, I have grandmother who didn't go to school. I said, one of your problems is because of too much knowledge. But my grandmother, the last a petty trader, the last thing she does on Saturday is to arrange. You know, they pull their money in colors. Arrange what she made for the week. And then, And out of that consistency in business, some of them build two, three houses. They send people to universities. Contentment within the land that God has given them by just following his principles. People don't, that's why knowledge says knowledge of love. People who are not educated, who are into Christianity, they easily believe the word. They don't have a problem with faith. Uh-huh. But you and me that went to school, logic, but you faith, law. Confirm, Abby. Uh-huh. I just be done it. <laughs> so even when God.
God is giving us instruction. Only calculate, Lonnie. This is the balance, brothers and sisters. And we need to embrace this, what I'm about to say. Please understand, no matter, don't be like the Midas, Midas king. Eh? Have this understanding. There is no lasting joy in things money can buy. If you don't, eh, even when money comes into your hands, like the Midas king, you will not be satisfied. When you are creating wealth, even at the detriment of your health, you don't know where to apply the brakes. Have that basic understanding. There is no lasting joy in things money can buy. And prosperity without eternal purpose leads to dissatisfaction and disappointment in life. That's why some people who are rich, I don't know some of those wealthy people, whether you, we read about them. They suddenly realize that they go and drink overdose of something and die in one highland. There must be an eternal purpose. And that eternal purpose is very simple because the Bible already said the principle of we brought nothing into this world. People decide your naming and they are going to decide your burial. You are not the one who decided how you want your naming ceremony to be. And you are not going to be the one that can decide how you... You can only write it. It's when people... I can, I can decide... I have decided how I want to die. I won't tell you. But I have decided the manner of death. I know I cannot die in plane crash. I, I, I can't die in a road accident. Uh, you can take your own. Yeah. I, I can't die. I can't die people... Uh, people uh, helping me to go to the bathroom. Mm -mm. The patriarch, the way they died, they willingly gathered their feet and they slept. And their natural force was not abated. I read something this morning. This is a... It's not, you know, I read something this morning. They said, David... At a stage, they realize that blanket does can't help him keep warm anymore. So they now they send this commander arrange <laughs> arrange a young Okweke. And then they said when David could not do anything, they realized that this man is about to go. <laughs> it's in the Bible. So, what is the conclusion of this message tonight? I believe in prosperity. We believe in prosperity. But well, let's go look at the definition of that prosperity. The church has argued, some part of the church, that's another extreme, about John 2. You know what Third John 2 says? Third John 2, 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Some people, one extreme up to now in the body of Christ says, that word prosperity there has nothing to do with finances. But look at the Greek word. The Greek word to prosper means yodo. E-U-O-D-O-O. -O -O. It means a good and prosperous journey in your land. A good and prosperous. So when the Bible says, he wish above all things that you prosper, it means as you are going on this journey into the land that God has planted you, you are spiritually whole. That's the definition of prosperity. Spiritual well-being physical health, and material blessing. So you can see the extreme. So church swung to that extreme, and everything is about money, money, money. So financial blessing was 
emphasize. And because we didn't place emphasis on what the real meaning of prosperity is, people are becoming rich, but they were losing their uh, health, they were losing their families. Can I have an amen? So when we say prosperity to us today, it means spiritual well-being. It means physical health. It means material or financial blessing. Can you see how I prioritize it? Spiritual well-being first. The health that promotes soundness of mind to be able to turn things around in business. And then the material and physical blessing that comes with our, or material blessing that comes with that. It's the same word. That same word, prosper. It's the same word Paul was emphasizing in 1 Corinthians 16.2. 1 Corinthians 16.2 is used. It's the same word. He said, on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper. It's the same word in Deuteronomy 8.18. Remembering the Lord God, our, 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 remembering the Lord God who has given us strength or power to prosper. Praise God. So, that word prosper means taking a good road, having a prosperous journey in life. As you go through life, it's balanced. You are balanced. Spiritual well-being, physical health, material blessing. As I close tonight, please take note of these three things. I've, I've called out certain scripture. Please mark them out in your Bible and meditate upon them. And these are the three things I want you to please take note. Number one, poverty does not produce piety. Yeah, poverty does not produce piety. So the poorer you are, the heaven you are, you are guaranteed the front, front seat in heaven. No. No. You said, how do I know that? Psalm 50, verses 10 to 12. It will interest you. Psalm 50, verses 10 to 12. This is God Almighty, oh, the creator of the hand of the heart. You can't, you can't now rewrite his word. He said, for every beast, every, every, every beast of the forest, the truth is that can you count them? Can you count the species? Which one do you want to count? Is it the hands family? Or the reptiles family? Or the one that walks on their full, full four legs? Which one do you want to count? But he said every beast of the forest. Which forest do you want to start counting? Kalahari forest or whatever rainforest? What, where? Or Zambiza Forest? Where do you want to count it? He said, but every beast of the forest is mine. Is mine. Is mine. I mean, uh, we went into a country recently, and we were told that the president, the current president of that country, is the highest cattle owner in the whole of Southern Africa. And how much cattle did he have? But they said his cattle is different. I don't know the number, but when you see his cattle, is a special. So an individual has so much wealth like that, and he can control the whole of Southern Africa. Said so the way his, his own cattle looks like is well stocked. That when he sells one, money comes in. He doesn't sell to individual. And they are denominated in dollars. So, but God is saying, every beast of the forest, too, it is mine. And then he said, and the cattle on a thousand. So, can't, when we read that scripture, we usually say a thousand cattle on hills. No, is is well, read it closely. Can you read it? Let's read it together. Verse 10. Every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on it. So, 
thousand hills. How many cattle do you think is on each of the hills? Let's read 11 and 12. He said, I know all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the fields are mine. Verse 12. If I were hungry, so that should reset our head. There is no amount of money that you have that God needs. No amount. I, I, I'm being honest here tonight, like I will always be. There is no amount of money. That is, you know, you know, you know how to do gymnastics. Eh? My interpreter, my worry, tongues in most of my interpreter. You know how to do gymnastics. But have you seen monkeys before? Or baboons? Have you seen some of those videos that leopard and all that, they are trying to trace, they are trying to catch a baboon. It goes to the, that thing, clang, clang, clang. And as soon as he reaches the top, it comes down again. And then he just, so whatever you are trying to do in terms of wealth creation, you are too late. Solomon, David, they've operated in larger scale. Can I have an amen? I hope I interpreted that for you very well. So God says, if I were hungry, I will not tell you. For the word is mine, and it's all is what? Fullness. So please, poverty does not produce piety. There is nothing noble in poverty. As a matter of fact, I hate it. And that's the reason why people are suffering in our world. That's the reason why diseases is high in our world. That is the reason why some nations are poorer. They categorize some third world and first world because people are conserving resources. It's not even just people, selected few. So there is nothing as a believer to think that if, if you are not making that significant progress on behalf of God, then you are a candidate heavenly band. You are. But hey, while we are here, there is more to be done with the opportunity God has given us. That's the first thing. Poverty doesn't produce piety. It doesn't mean that the poorer we are, the holier we are becoming. No. 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 I think we will be more holy when we can take children out of the streets in, in Nigeria and put them in school. Abi? We can be more holy when we can build hospitals. We can be more holy when we can be the voice to the voiceless. Secondly, we must learn to think in line with God's word. We must. That's our responsibility for us to do anything significant. Look at what Romans 12 verses 1 to 3 says. We must learn to think. I mean, the business people in our world, they are looking for, people are looking for how to take advantage of other people. But for us, he said, he beseech us by the masses of God. We present our bodies as a living, can you see prosperity again? Holy and accepted to God, which is a reasonable service. That's physical prosperity. He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that we do for you and I? We will be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect. They are, they are linked together. And acceptable and perfect will. Verse 3. Say, for I say through the grace, so there is a grace given to every one of us. We must not think of ourselves more highly. It's not that we should not think highly of ourselves. That's another place where people have mis mis uh, uh, misinterpreted that scripture. Think highly of yourself. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are loaded. You are too loaded to fail. Greatness is written upon you. That's the thing. In God, you can run through troops and leap over walls. So think of yourself highly. But anything outside the world, that's what they say we should not think about. God has dealt with us a measure of faith. And we must allow that faith to grow. Can I have an amen? amen. If we don't think in line with God's word, look at what happens. Our thinking will be wrong. And if our thinking is wrong, our believing will become wrong. And if our believing is wrong, our confession will be wrong. Praise God. Praise God. If there is anything that the devil is still touching in many people's mind, is this mind thing. The devil wants you to belittle yourself. The devil wants you to say, 
if you call for that, you may not be able to. I said to people these days, they said, oh, I want this thing. Do you want it? Go for it. They say, I don't have the experience. Ah, even the one who asking for experience, if somebody has not given them the opportunity, there's no way they will get the experience that they are asking for. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. So learn to think in line with God's word. When it comes to the subject of prosperity, for your spiritual well-being, for your physical health, for your financial being, you must think in line with God's word. There's so much stinking thinking all around us. If our thinking is aligned with God's word, our believing we align with his word, we are bound to see what we believe for. Can I have an amen? And lastly tonight, please, always learn that in defining abundance, what does the word of God say? And that's what I said earlier on. You have to know the dividing line. Midas did not understand it. So it was very easy for him that in the midst of abundance, his soul was empty. The same thing. And so that's what Solomon was writing. He says, hey, I must define it because I can't afford that money should take the place. And I cannot afford to live in lack because I will steal. A lot of people who steal is because they can't, who are believers, they can't trust God in love. A lot of people who also misuse the word is because they don't even know. We were talking about uh, people who steal in, in public places. These are common wealth. What we make a person to steal is because their mind is too little. And because they steal, they don't have street sense. Business that has not started. Somebody is using 500 million to write business proposal. Because it wasn't his money in the first place. If he has street credibility, he will have developed social capital that he can get that thing done. Not at that amount of money. Can I have an amen? Can I have an amen? There are people in this room, if I want to do anything, I need social capital. And you get it done. Cheaper, faster, credible. Because they can also see value in what we are trying to do. Can I have an amen tonight? So we must learn at every point in time to define it. Because see, how do you define this thing? If anything you are looking for is threatening your spiritual well-being, is threatening your health, is threatening your, what's the other one, financial thing, then it's not worth pursuing. It's not worth it. It's not. It's not. One thing I'm also learning from the Bible and from all people is that people who really have this money, wealth, who have created wealth, they are very conservative. They are very simple. They still buy corn to eat. They see heat amala with people because they are not they haven't taken anything wrongly from people so they are not looking for that somebody will poison them can i have an amen tonight and they can see visit lala they are friends with lala 40 years back they are still friends you know some people once small tertiary money enters their heart they said they need to change their circle of influence what rubbish is that bladder dash nonsense Nonsense. How many of you know tonight that old friends are better than new ones? How many of you have read the Bible that words will produce friends for you? But those friends, they are lo- everybody, the ones that endure real friendship. Uh-uh. There are people who have known, look at the politics. These people have known themselves way back. Way back. So in closing, I have one minute more. Please. This story, eh? let's leave them say them say. Know God for yourself. And that's the season we are in. Eh? Job, I mean, <coughs> Job was a wealthy man. But Job was a wealthy man. He knew the principle, but fear set him. 
But the Bible was talking about it. Because oh, my principle here, yeah, in Job 42, the Bible says everything that he lost was restored to him a hundredfold. He must have understood the principle. Please, prosperity means spiritual well-being. It means your physical being, you are fit, you can make sound decisions. Then it means blessing, visible blessing. That's the word prosperity. So what we have done so far is that we have picked just one of those things, emphasized it, so we swung to the other extreme. But God wants us to be balanced. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is true from the beginning. Thank you for the blessing tonight. Thank you for expanding this word in our hearts. Thank you because we are willing, we are obedient, and we will not be like the mind as king. But Lord, we will follow your instruction. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for what you are doing, preparing us for that which we are in right now. I pray for strength for everyone. Our strength in you will not fail. We will not be weary. We will not draw back. But Lord, we will see accurately. We will hear accurately. We will speak accurately. And we will, we are blessing you already. And you will use us to be a blessing to all the people. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.